On this video I will be building out this dining table which is actually coming to my summer cabin that is being built at the same time. This is built with uh, using a Finnish maple which is actually quite rare to find and I really like the wood. I start by thinking how I want the orientation with the slabs to be. I was leaning towards putting them in an angle instead of doing two straight rivers and I think it was the right decision. I'm using this simple form I just created quickly for seeing how the end result will look like. With this orientation came a lot of cutting but it was an easy job with my track saw and in no time at all I had the slabs cut and already here I was thinking I made the right decision with the orientation so it will be a slightly different looking table than what I have built before. To be honest I was a bit worried if the end result would look a bit silly uh, with these three rivers but uh, I, I actually really like how it turned out. There are probably a million videos showing how to build a mold so I won't go into details but I used the process that Blacktail Studios is using where you apply caulk inside the mold under the pieces and outside as well then it's almost guaranteed not to leak at least if built properly. These slabs have quite a lot of knot holes, which in this application I actually like because I think they look great in the end product once they are filled with black resin or epoxy. For them to look great I needed to clear all the bark and other loose stuff and I used whatever tools I found, screwdrivers, small tools and yeah, whatever was needed to get into the smaller cracks and get the loose bark out. Then in preparation for sealing the slabs I cleaned the edges, then it was time to apply the tabletop epoxy that dries quickly just to seal the slabs so they won't stain or introduce too many bubbles. And then it was time again to make the edges ready for the actual epoxy pour. The edge won't be visible in the end product because I will be using a very black epoxy on it but still I decided to go with the nylon version of this tool so it doesn't scuff up the edges too heavily. I think this is plenty enough when uh, used in this way. For calculating the amount of epoxy needed I'm using Blacktail Studio style for it. It's nice, simple and uh, quite accurate way of doing it and as I am very bad in math this actually works great for me. I have added the link to the description if you want to see proper instructions how to calculate. This is a full-sized dining table so it does take a lot of epoxy as you can see from the amount of empty cans I have here. I mix the epoxy at least three minutes and then add the dye which doesn't look great on this clip because of the black bucket. Uh, then I check the color and if it's too light add more dye like I did. And then the fun part, use torch to pop the bubbles. I'm not really sure if this is even necessary because this epoxy cures so slowly and I think the bubbles would automatically come out as well but it's fun and quick and doesn't do any harm so why not. The bucket I used for pouring wasn't really good for this job, it was hard to get it exactly to the place where I wanted it to go, but I had sealed the slab so it didn't do any harm that it spilled over a bit, so uh, here's a few clips from me uh, doing the actual pour on the table. I'm using a slow curing epoxy and it takes two to three weeks for it to cure completely, so uh, plenty of time to start working with other projects while waiting. Now for the fun part. I've had some problems with the mold release I use. So for this one I decided to try with the cheapest packaging tape I could find for the mold. Wrong decision. As you can see in this footage I was really struggling to get the table out from the mold and I had to use absolutely everything I got to get it off. Eventually I did, but I'll just let you enjoy my pathetic attempts on working in this. For my next resin table I have purchased uh, tape specifically designed for mold release so I'll be interested to see how this works. Something for future build and video. Anyway, I'll just add a few clips with some music in the background to watch me work on it. And I am a big big fan of uh, death metal, black metal music so uh, I tried to find some uh, nice royalty free music I could find.
So as you saw, I used crowbar, I used everything I got, and now I'm even using plywood as the wedge. And here I'm using a piece of framing wood as well. Finally the table is off from the mold, and it was heavier than I thought, quite hard to move. And as you can see from my table, uh, I had a, quite a bit of cleaning up to do. I was happy. The table was finally off and it actually started to look nice. Obviously it wasn't ready to be finished and sanded yet, so uh, I hot glued the table to my new flattening setup. And I'm using uh, this Woodpecker's flattening jig and my new router and a new router bit as well. This is a huge improvement to my earlier setup and I just love how this works. The bit is much bigger than I had before and the setup overall doesn't make nearly as much noise than what I had earlier. And here's a clip which sounds on. Not too bad, right? So very very happy with the uh, jig and the setup I now have. I still had some problems with my dust collection. Um, I think I have a bit of an underpowered unit and this is all the way back in my workshop. So I have actually since then bought a new dust collection unit. So hopefully in future that will be better as well. But uh, even with the slight issues with the dust collection, I think the process with this one is really really nice since I don't have a CNC and I don't have an access to an industrial machine to do this so I like it and again using my track so now I'm cutting the table to its final length and I think it's always a good idea to leave extra until this stage so if there's any problems you can still fix them for the bigger holes to fix, I'm using this very quickly setting epoxy. I think this was the five minute version. And then obviously using the traditional CA glue and activator method for the smaller holes. I don't know if it was the dye, but I think this five minute epoxy actually started to set in like one or two minutes. So almost too quickly to be honest the next time i think i'll be using something slightly different but still it, it worked okay as you can see i don't have any professional light so i'm just using my uh, mobile phone to see all the tiny holes i might have and uh, using ca glue and activator to get rid of them before st starting to send the router bit and this setup I used left much less problems to be fixed. So as mentioned, I'm very happy with it because usually this phase has taken hours and now I think I was able to do this part maybe in half of the time. Then comes the process that everybody hates, but me. I still like sanding and uh, I sand it to 180 grit. And I decided to use my router to add this uh, small round over to both sides of the table. This is not sponsored, but after watching Wood Whisperer video of different finishes, I wanted to try out Natura One Coat just to get a feeling how different it is to Rubio. The process for mixing it and applying it is 100% the same than Rubio. The smell is actually more appealing. If you have used Rubio, you know the smell. I think this, this was uh, better in that sense. But the end result to me feels exactly the same. So I will probably keep using Natura One Coat in future because it is cheaper and it feels like pretty much the same product than Rubio does. My way to apply the finish, whether it's Rubio or this natural one coat, is to first work the edges so that I don't get any dripping marks. Then I start with the bottom, uh, just apply it as instructed and uh, I use this cheap buffer to uh, really, really get it into the wood. Then after that's done, I will do the top directly after. And just like with Rubio, after a few minutes, wipe all the excess off and then you're pretty much done. As I'm still a beginner, I've never used anything else than Rubio and now Natural One Coat, which basically are the same, same product. So uh, very easy to apply and I will keep using these kind of products probably in future as well.
with the table done and finished uh, it was time to attach the legs and I decided to use very simple metal legs for this this table has so many curves and the knot holes have uh, very interesting details so I wanted to have a very kind of a simple leg design and I'm using threaded inserts with a bit of CA glue to attach them so I think this process as well you have seen in million different videos not really need to go into the details how, how it's used but a strong recommendation to use threaded inserts instead of uh, directly screwing the uh, table legs on. The table feels sturdy enough but uh, the slabs I got weren't as thick as I wanted they are roughly three and a half centimeters or 1.4 inches so I decided to add these things I don't know what they're called in, called in English please let me know in the comments no one will ever see them and if anyone ever decides to dance in the table now it should be sturdy enough one and final step to go which is to apply n3 nano coating on my table a finish I use on all of my table builds nowadays this is a hyperspeed video of me applying it and the reason you see me walking around the shop uh, is that after all the steps there's a wait time usually between 60 to 90 seconds before getting to the next step for proper instructions how to apply it I've added a link to the N3 instruction video by Blacktail Studio and why N3 nano coding here's a clip from my other table build uh, I have linked it in the description below as well where I put some water on a finished table and uh, see how well it gets protected with this one I just love this stuff I don't know how long this in uh, 3 nano coding will last so that's something uh, I will then learn as I start using this table but uh, it should last for uh, quite a long time and uh, it's quite easy to apply new layers whenever needed with that it's complete thanks for watching and if you like the video please subscribe i do have more builds coming up